Oddworld is home to a great many bizarre creatures, some of which are sapient and others not so. And while Oddworld is vast, about ten times larger than Earth and home to several continents, only one of these has ever been explored so far, the continent named Mudos, located within Oddworld's northern hemisphere. East Mudos was the first region of the continent to be explored over the course of the first three games in the series, with West Mudos being explored in the series' fourth instalment. There are several notable differences in the environments on each side of the continent, with the western side being considerably less developed. The western region and its inhabitants will be covered in an upcoming video to keep this one at a reasonable length. I'll also not be covering every single species from the first three games due to time constraints, but the most important and recognisable ones are all here. Oddworld has everything that can be expected of a planet with intelligent life. Countryside, large cities, villages, etc. It has a variety of differing climates, such as jungles, forests, deserts and icy mountains. It also has two known moons, the Mudokan Moon and the Gabit Moon, as well as others yet to be revealed. What's curious about these two astral bodies is they each have the respective species paw prints on their surface, species that we will meet shortly. These enormous prints on the two moons are taken by each of these species to be signs from their gods that they're the chosen ones of Oddworld, and frankly, it seems like the only valid explanation. And so, now, we will look at a variety of species who inhabit this part of Oddworld, they're divided into three groups, industrialists, natives, and wildlife. We'll start with the Mudokans. These are a sapient species, humanoid in appearance, and come under the native classification. They're greenish-blue in colour. The Mudokans evolved from birds, and still possess some feathers that grow out of their heads and, in some cases, on other parts of their bodies. They are said to have hollow bones, making them lightweight and agile, and able to outmanoeuvre even some of the more animalistic species on Oddworld. They're a highly spiritual race, at one time being the rulers of their domain. Some are able to enter a deep state of meditation by chanting. They then conjure up a powerful spiritual energy that can be used to possess the bodies of other beings and control their movements. Many Mudokans are born in captivity, having been enslaved by another sapient race native to Mudos, the Gluckans, who we'll come to soon. Some, however, are born wild and live a tribal lifestyle in the wilderness. They're highly religious, living something akin to a pagan lifestyle. There are a number of different classes within the true traditional Mudokan society, like the Tomahawkers, Mud Archers, Shamans, and Monks. There are also a number of different tribes, like the Mudomo and the Mudanchi. These tribes worship different animals within their world, but also worship individual deities, like the Almighty Raisin. Not all Mudokans get to live this native lifestyle, however. There are many who live in captivity, being forced to work within the Gluckens' gigantic factories and meat processing plants. The workers in these hellish places are known as scrubs. The Gabbits are another sapient species, capable of speech and intelligent thought. They come under the native classification as well. They're monopedal with one webbed foot, their hind legs having fused into one over the course of their evolution, and live an amphibious lifestyle. They have large heads and enormous eyes. The Gabbits are endangered, being overhunted by an industrialist species known as the Vikers, who we'll get to in another video, chiefly for their eggs which are called Gabbia, a delicacy among Oddworld's elite. They're extremely social, using high-pitched squeaks and squeals to communicate with each other, and are adept aquatic acrobats. 
they seem to display many of the characteristics of both frogs and dolphins. They swim together in pods and mostly eat a type of fish called a worry fish. Young gabbits are known as gabbywogs, begin their life in an area known as Maspa, the source of the Mongo River in eastern Mudos. Eventually, when they reach maturity, they leave the Mongo River and head for Oddworld's oceans. The Gluckens are an industrialist species, perhaps THE industrialist species on Oddworld. They're native to eastern Mudos and are part of the Octagai family. The Gluckens have large, bulbous heads and glowing eyes with small, tube-like ears, scaly skin and large teeth. They certainly have a cephalopod-like appearance. They vary in skin colour and tone, ranging from purple to green to brown. While they tend to conceal themselves with sharp suits to give themselves an important and imposing appearance, their bodily structure betrays just how weak these creatures really are. Owing to their over-reliance on technology and lesser species to do all of their hard work for them, their legs have shrunken down and become vestigial, basically useless. As such, they have had to develop long and strong arms to support their body weight. They look simultaneously horrifying and ridiculous, not quite what you expect to see under there. They weren't always like this, however. Many centuries ago, the Gluckens were friendly with the Mudokans, back in their more tribal days. But with the arrival of the Mudokans' moon, the Mudokans declared themselves the supreme species of Oddworld. This enraged the Gluckens, who cut off all ties with the Mudokans and retreated to their own territory. They then began to develop a new civilization, one of heavy industry and technology, forgetting their spiritual past completely and eventually reaching a power level so immense that they were able to enslave their former allies and cause the extinction of at least one known species of wildlife, the Meech, and potentially many more. The Sligs are another industrialist species and serve as the heavies for the Gluckens. This species is known for its violence, cruelty and laziness, often being seen sleeping on the job. While they seem to enjoy their work in security and law enforcement, getting sadistic pleasure from beating the Madokans and gunning them down when they try to escape, they themselves are still effectively slaves to the Gluckens. The Slig Queen provides the Gluckens with her young. Any Sligs that do not meet the Gluckens' standards in terms of their performance at work are sent back to her. They are then punished severely. Originally, the Sligs were primitive, like all of the other intelligent life they share Oddworld with. They lived in the swamps and bogs of East Mudos. The Sligs are small and stocky, with green skin. They have five tendrils over their mouths. Like the previously mentioned gabbits, their legs are fused together, though in the Sligs case, it's believed to be a case of binding their legs together when they are young, rather than a natural physical state that came about as a result of evolution. Also, like the Gluckens, they've developed strong and powerful arms as their primary method of locomotion. That is, until they put their trousers on. Their robotic sleek pants, provided to them by the much more intelligent and advanced Gluckens, allow them much greater mobility. They also wear masks with glowing red eyes, which serve an important purpose, a very important purpose, hiding their ugly faces. The Gluckens don't like the way the Sligs look. The Sligs come in several forms, for example there are the Big Bro Sligs, which are the result of giving regular Sligs a ton of steroids, and the Flying Sligs, who use a flying harness instead of Slig pants. There are many more varieties, but these are mostly based on the equipment and weaponry used. These have little to do with their actual biology, which is the main purpose of this video, and so I'll skip over them. The Paramites are a form of wildlife native to eastern Mudos who make their home in the Paramonian forests. They're worshipped by the Mudokan Mudomo tribe and should be considered extremely dangerous. 
Due to the Gluckens overhunting the Paramites to make Paramite pies, they have become an endangered species. They apparently don't breed in captivity, and so have been hunted to near extinction so that the tasty treat can continue being produced. They're pale in colour due to not spending much time in the sun, living in the shaded forests. They're quadrupedal, and don't seem to have any recognisable facial features, with an appendage resembling a six-fingered hand serving as their face. Within the palm of their face is a small, fanged mouth. The Paramite is carnivorous and deadly, able to kill most creatures with a single blow from its powerful hand face. The Paramites are, in my opinion, the creepiest looking of all of Oddworld's creatures. This is probably because they sort of resemble spiders, and I hate spiders. They are also able to spin silk, which they produce from their abdomen, so there are definitely some parallels in their behaviour. They nest and hunt in large groups, and are highly social creatures. They display intelligent hunting techniques, as whenever they appear to be on their own, they really aren't. They'll appear to retreat, but in reality, it's simply a ploy to lure unsuspecting prey into a trap. They also, while not sapient, have developed a very basic language which consists of clicks, snaps and squeals, among other noises, used to communicate with one another. The Scrabs are my personal favourite in the series, and are a quadrupedal creature, and like the Paramite, are not sapient but have a certain degree of intelligence that allows them to communicate with others of their kind, using barks and growls. I've always liked the design of the Scrabs. I'm not sure what draws me to them in particular, but they certainly look formidable, and frankly like something out of a nightmare. They have four crab-like legs, a large claw-like mouth. They're red and yellow in colour, and again, like the Paramites, don't have any visible eyes. They're driven by pure hunger, and this is the sense they use to navigate the world. They typically don't fight other Scrabs unless they happen to be from a different pack. When they do engage another Scrab in a fight, they each spin around in a mad frenzy, unleashing hit after hit upon each other until one collapses. At this point, the loser is trampled on and left for dead. Brutal. They're worshipped by the ancient Mudanchi Mudokan tribe, and are among the most dangerous predators on the planet. They're typically found in a region of East Mudos named Scrabania. The Elam is a bipedal creature with horns and a horizontal posture. Their colouring is a mix of brown and tan, and they're often used by Mudokans and possibly other sapient species as mounts for travelling. Its chest and abdominal cavity are wide, providing good respiration and food storage. It's unknown if there is any real sexual dimorphism in this species with regards to its horns and its other bodily features. It is believed to be a herbivore, and has a particular affinity for eating honey. Its eyes are set wide apart, giving the elam a wide field of vision. It has two short, double-clawed arms. Its legs are muscular, and its toes have three black claws. A vestigial dewclaw is also present. The elam's body ends in a short, movable tail, which is used to convey its emotions. The slogs are the slig's attack dogs. They're red in colour and bipedal. Like many other animals on Oddworld, they have no visible eyes, but they do have a large mouth with razor-sharp teeth. It's believed that, due to their lack of eyes, they use their barks as a form of echolocation. Their pups are called sloggies. The slogs also have a variation that is huge, bigger than a mudokan. With their large chests, slogs have an enormous lung capacity, and so can sprint for long periods, able to outrun even the light and agile mudokans. Their legs are short, strong and powerful. They're loving companions and loyal to their slig owners. Their favourite food is fresh, bloody meat, and they can smell their prey's fear and, while they too have no eyes, can use their senses to detect the unfortunate prey item's adrenaline levels. 
They usually go for the head or throat when attacking. The slurgs are a basic, slug-like gastropod and the lowest life form known to exist on Oddworld. They're black and purple in colour. When accidentally stepped on, they make a loud squelching noise and then burst, alerting other slurgs within the vicinity to an intruder. Whether or not they can recover from this type of injury is unknown, but it is likely that they can, much like the gastropods of our reality. And finally, the Meeches, who, due to being hunted to extinction by the greedy Gluckens, are no longer around. Though it's unknown if the species as a whole is extinct, or if it's just no longer around in East Mudos. There aren't many images available of the Meech, but what little exists shows that it had small forearms and powerful hind legs with three toed feet. They were brown in colour, and stood between three and a half and four feet tall. They had two sets of jaws and an undoubtedly ferocious appearance. It can be assumed that, like the scrabs and paramites, they weren't sapient, but had a set of vocalisations that they used to communicate amongst themselves. During their time in existence, the Meeches would have been revered by the Mudokans, but it's unknown if the Meeches were worshipped by them per se. It is, however, possible that there is a currently unknown Mudokan tribe that did so. Oddworld truly is a fascinating place. The creatures here are quite unlike those of any other series that I know of. They're the product of some extremely creative people with incredible imaginations, specifically that of series creator Lorn Lanning. Personally, I consider the Oddworld games to be one of the best examples of world building ever created. When making this video, I made a conscious decision to base it on the original games from 1997 to 2001, because those are the ones I played. I am, however, aware of the reboot series which replaces the old games, and has rendered them no longer canon. I haven't played those two as I'm not really into video games anymore, though I was as a kid. I've seen them being played though, but to be perfectly honest, I feel like they're a bit too slick and polished, and severely lacking in atmosphere when compared to the originals. In my opinion, there's far too much emphasis being put on realism these days, and I don't feel that a series like Oddworld needs to be made realistic. I prefer the grim, yet cartoonish feel of the old games. But anyway, this isn't meant to be a game review or anything. I'm never going to buy these newer games as I don't even own a console, so what's the point in moaning about them? This video isn't about that. It's about the biology of the various creatures that inhabit this fictional world. These games will always have a special place in my heart, and as I also played the fourth game in the series, 2005's Oddworld Stranger's Wrath back in the day, I'll be talking about the different species from that game and the West Mudos region in next week's video, so please keep an eye out for it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe if you're interested in speculative evolution, weird obscure science fiction, and other things in a similar vein. And I'd also like to give a big thank you to all of my members and patrons who can be seen here. Thank you to each and every one of you, and if you haven't become a patron yet, you can do so by clicking the link in the description. This has been Beware the Q, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.